Welcome to Pop Culture Podcast, episode 78. I'm Jay. I'm Adrian. We're back with another week of comic books, movies, TV. I have a board game I'm going to talk about in this neon blue drink. I feel like uh, there should be an umbrella in this or... Or a piece of pineapple or something. something. Yeah. yeah. I should be doing it as a shot off of somebody. So this is called a Ocean Breeze Punch. Uh-huh. And uh, it has one and a half ounce of vodka. I bumped it up to two. Of course. One and a half ounce of blue caracal. Uh-huh. Uh, one ounce of triple sec. Okay. And three ounces of lemonade. Interesting. Right? All right. Let's give this thing a shot. Yeah, I mean, it just tastes like vodka lemonade to me. It really, it really does. Yeah, I think the blue just added the color. Yep, it tastes just like vodka lemonade. Okay, I threw the cherry in there because I like cherries. Sure. I thought the there red go. contrasted nice to the blue. Okay, that's, that's it. Hmm. Well, there we go. Um, easy to make. Uh, yeah, just all, put vodka and lemonade together and fuck it. All ingredients you would find at most any decent bar. So. If you really want to sound like you're having something better than vodka lemonade, throw this at them. On the flip side, I feel like you can make this into like little shot glass vials, wear a bandolier across your chest, and just attract every ASU frat girl around. That's true, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what are you doing this Saturday? You want to go to ASU with me? I can buy a sweatshirt while I'm there, there because I am an official ASU student. There you go. And I did go to school there also. There you go. Yeah. It'll be good. Although I will be um, in an, in another continent completely when I start my first class this fall. That's right. Actually, guys. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be five thousand feet in the air. Yeah, you uh you're leaving town here pretty soon. I am. I, I'm leaving not uh not this I'm leaving on the first. however far away that right. is. Ten days. Something like so that. So we'll have one more with you. And then you're going to go on a little bit of hiatus. Yep. And I'm going to have to get some guest hosts. There you go. Some guest editors. Which, to be fair, they're probably going to do a better job than what I've been putting out lately. Uh, with the saga of computers that is my life. Did you not notice there, there are two right down the other side? Just I, sitting on the ground over there? I didn't notice that. Yeah, that's that's that's, just, that's an off-air story. Okay, cool. All right. Nice. So let's talk about on-air stuff. Sure. Um, let's start with TV. TV. All right. Um. I have watched absolutely zero out of the ordinary uh, as far as my TV shows. So I've got The Pretty Little Liars, The Girl Meets World, The Preacher, The Hell on Wheels, which one episode left of Hell on Wheels. That's it. I am super excited. This last episode was a total cliffhanger. Oh, sons of bitches. Um, So I'm excited about that. That's, I think, Saturday night is the very last episode of that. So uh, I will be watching that maybe Saturday afternoon, depending on how my day goes. Uh, And then I watched some more hot ones. Which, really not TV, but I mean, I consider that TV. It, it totally counts. It's it's, it's new episodical. Me- yeah, it's new media TV. Yeah. Um. So I watched. Um, you watched Red Man. Yeah, I watched Red Man. Yeah. And I think there's one more. They had one more, and it was a pretty famous person, if I'm not mistaken. It's I'm, gonna bother me now. I'm, I'm gonna look this up. Go ahead. I, I've actually started going. I, have you watched all of them to date? There's a few I haven't okay. watched yet. So, uh, like on, I haven't watched DJ Khaled. I haven't watched that one. Um, on, I think it was Sunday, Jess and I sat down and I started from episode one. And it was totally different. Oh, really? I didn't like it at all. Interesting. So, they didn't do um, the lineup. So, for those of you who have not watched it, what they do in, in current episodes is there's a lineup of wings uh, in progression of uh, most mild to most hot on the scoville scale um and they have all the bottles lined up the first episode they just brought out a plate of wings that were at different temperatures but there's no delineation of a scale so you just grabbed one and went for it yeah somehow on the plate the people that were eating knew oh this is the most mild one so i don't know if there was something there but as far as the layout it was totally different so maybe it was like a clock like one two three four you just go around in a circle yeah. plate. yeah um and that was who was the first one? I don't even know now. My, I hate YouTube on my phone. It is, <laughs> it is like the worst app. Um, 
ones. Here we go. Because how many are there total? Yeah, 20, yeah, there's... there's 26, but really there's 25. Okay. Because one of the episodes is a one and a half minute clip. Oh, that does not count as an episode. Um, oh, Gronkowski. Yeah, Gronk. Yeah. He didn't fare so well. Really? He got through it, but on wing like three or four, he was like, no, wing two. He was like, this is this is really spicy. Two's just sriracha, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, or maybe it's the uh, ch- the weird Colombian. I don't know. Cholula? But, yeah, there's one other one. El Takaweo. I don't know. Anyways. Um, so at like two or three, he was like, this, this is really bad. And the host is like, this gets a lot worse. <laughs> if, if this spicy ketchup is doing you wrong, I don't, I don't know how you're going to do it. He ends up getting all the way through. After like the next one, after the one he, he started panicking on, he just started taking him down, no problem. Uh, he has no personality, though. Well, he's a football player. They're not known for... like Think of all the jocks back in high school. You had the one charismatic guy who had the ticket, and the rest of them were just, you know, Neanderthalic. Yeah. Uh, so, Tony Yeo was the first one. Okay. I have no clue who that is. But he's the one that just had like the, the round, whatever. Uh, but so we watched the first five that night, and I'm like, I don't under, I don't know who most of these people are. Machine Gun Kelly. Oh yeah, he's a rapper. Yeah, a white white. Oh guy. yeah, white guy from Cleveland. Uh, or yeah, something. yeah. Uh, and then uh, Gunplay. I don't know Gunplay. Right, and then Ja Rule. Ja Rule. Well, obviously, you know Ja, ja Rule was actually a really interesting one because he was talking about some of uh, like him and DMX stealing a car. Oh, yeah. Even like, after they were multi-platinum artists. Of course. Just because well, they got a statehood. DMX ends up in prison every year, right? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Very cool. So, I watched a bunch of episodes of that. And that was it for my TV. Uh, for my TV, uh, Wayward Pines is almost over. Okay. Season two is just in- getting increasingly better. I've been so happy with season two. Okay. A show I've not been happy with season two is Master, is uh, Top Chef Masters. Okay. You were actually talking good about this a couple I weeks ago. I loved season one. Okay. Season one was great. They All the chefs helped each other. Right. They were very, like, talked to each other, helped each other, like, tasted each other's food. Oh, you should try a little bit more of this. Don't do that. Like, all that kind of stuff. Season two, it's not like that. They turned cutthroat? They got cutthroat <laughs> right away. And it's not entirely cutthroat. So in this last episode, one of the, they had to go from the Top Chef kitchen to where they were serving it in a different hotel that was like an hour away from L.A. And she left her stew back in the kitchen. Okay. So she t- asked them, hey, can you can you start my yucca potatoes while I go back, get my stew, come back, and then... So everyone's like, no, no, sorry, I got my own thing. And one girl's like, yeah, okay, I guess so. And she burnt them oh, because sh- she just wasn't paying attention. She was in her own world. And it, she was one of the final two contestants, her and one other person. The other person won. Of course. And his comment to her was, well, what'd you learn? Don't help other people. Wow. And I'm all like, Marcus, you're a well-known chef, and you're actually a really nice guy, so don't be a dick. Yeah, right. But the way he said it, he wasn't being a dick, because he was like, this is a competition. We're competing for charity. Like, I want, I love my fellow chefs, and they're all my friends, but being friends with them isn't going to get $10,000 to XYZ charity. True. Yeah. And he's not wrong in that aspect. It was just very different dynamic from season one right. to season two. So it's it's as if somebody was like, "No, the conflict is what sells all these other shows. We gotta." And that's probably what it was, right? Because the producers probably decided, or the editors probably decided to. Here's the thing: they very well could have been just as kind as all the other seasons, but they just edited, edited it yeah. differently. Oh, absolutely, oh, for sure. Yeah, that's every other episode of Real World. Because if you look at Top Chef and Master Chef and all these shows, when the credits roll, there's always that clip that says final evaluation eliminations determined by yep. Bravo producers by what. So the chefs don't even really decide who's being cut. The producers yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's TV. It's I still like it well enough that I enjoy learning like some recipes or hearing more about the, the you know, the master chefs. Um, the one thing that really pissed me off about season one was the second to last challenge they had some of the uh top chef people come in and help them as their sous chefs so the master chefs were some of them were just like hey you know they got to choose 
who was going to be on their team. Right. So one of the master chefs is like, I want you to go in the kitchen. I want you to give me two carrots. I want you to bring them back. And these are the five different ways I want to see you cut it. While you're cutting that carrot, I want you to talk to me about your experience. Okay. Which I understand, right? Because you do want to, you have to pick four chefs that are going to help you win. We're talking about $100,000. Yeah. So I get that he's like, I want to pick the people who actually can do A, follow orders, actually B, when I say Bruwa's this carrot, actually knows what that means. So I don't have to sit here and handhold. But all the top chef contestants were just like, who does this guy think he is? <laughs> like, how dare he? I mean, sure, he's just a Michelin star, James Beard award winning, best selling. Yeah. He only has seven restaurants. Who the fuck does this guy think? He, you, know, you know what I mean? I was like, ah. Oh. Get off your high fucking horses. Yeah. Like he's asking you to cut carrots. Like, right. Get over yourself. This is the shit you had to do to get where you are now. So you shouldn't have a problem with it. You should understand it. Not only that. It's the shit you expect out of your people in your kitchen. But no, see, that's just it. The contestants on Top Chef, they're not, they're not executive chefs. Oh. They, so the masters are. This was Sorry, the master. I, I was thinking of that. Yeah. Yeah. This was the master asking the people who were going to work for him to do these things. And okay. they were like. I was on Top Chef season four. Why do I have to do? Because you know what that means to me? Not a goddamn thing. Right. So it, that annoyed me. Okay. And with that said, oh, look, I made extras. <laughs> Refill. Nice. Um, all right. So you watched that. Did you watch anything else? I did. Um, I'm re-watching How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Because it's just such a good show. Yeah, I mean, I, it I is. I love sure. that show so much. It's, I don't know that I could rewatch it because the ending pissed me off so much. But... I hate the... So here's what you do. Don't watch the last season? No, you watch the last season. And when it comes to the last 20 minutes in the final episode, turn it off, go on to YouTube, turn on the alternate ending, and then the show's fantastic. <laughs> and then it's great. There you go. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but it's great background noise while I'm cooking, while I'm cleaning, while I'm putting things away, while yeah. I'm you know getting ready in the morning in the shower or whatever. So really what it boils down to is in the morning, I don't want to listen to loud music and disturb my neighbors because I wake up early. Yeah. So I put it on TV. Okay. It is what it is. The other show we watched uh, is we started Jane the Virgin uh, season two. I was going to say, you've watched it before, but yeah. season two. Okay. If you're looking at my notes funny because it says Jane the V card. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, that is shorthand. <laughs> that is shorthand. Uh, so Jane the Virgin season two. Uh, it, it's really funny. Like, I really enjoy it. It is such an over the top, over dramatic telenovela. But it's a mockery of a television novel right. where even the narrator realizes it's all over the top and it's sh it's sticky. Yeah. But I enjoy it and I think it's really funny. So okay, uh, season two just came back to just came to Netflix. Okay. So I'm glad we're able to catch up on that. I zombies expected back next week. So <sighs> I'll give I'll give that a shot. Why? Uh, I I've made it very clear how I feel about iZombie. I know. I'll still watch it though. Any uh, any movies? I have none. I have one. I uh, watched The Secret Life of Pets. Oh, okay. So we saw that in theaters. Uh, my wife and uh, our friend Vana were in tears, like beginning oh. to end. I'm like, not surprised. At the beginning of the trailers, they were already like <laughs> laughing it up. Jeez. Oh, it's it, if you've seen the trailer and you thought it was cute and funny, you'll like the, the movie. Then you'll like the movie. That's that's all there is to it. Yeah. It was an hour and a half of that. I will say the trailer did not show the best parts of the movie. Oh, good. There were a lot more funny lines in the movie. And then when you saw the clips from the trailer in context, they were very funny. Okay. Because, I mean, obviously that's, that's definitely something that happens more often than not anymore, that the trailer is all the best portions of the movie. Right. So I'm glad to see that uh, in this one they... They saved some for the actual moviegoers. They saved some moviegoers. The context made it much funnier. And really, this was its second week in theaters. It was Ghostbusters first week in theaters. Guess which one actually came out on top? A Secret Life of Pets. Secret Life of Pets. It's because nobody wants to see Ghostbusters. Nobody does. Oh. Uh, but they have confirmed they will be making Ghostbusters 2. Well, of course. Um, the other movie I will have to talk about next time is Predestination. Have you watched it yet? I have not, but okay. I got the disc in. Okay. So the disc is in. It's been copied to my hard drive. Did nice. that this morning. So I'll get around to watching it probably this weekend. Okay. I'm real curious to see what you what you think about that. I'm sure I'm going to think great, great things about it. Uh-huh. So 
Let's take a moment really fast to talk about some sports stuff. Okay. Uh, you're, you're looking at the table. Well, yes. We're going to get to the table in just a moment. Okay. First, let's talk about Brock Lesnar, UFC 200, SummerSlam, I don't know, 187. Like, I can't keep track. Uh, 20, 30, 33? I don't know. I don't know. Su- SummerSlam 2016. Sure. I mean, I think that's that might be what they're doing now. I think they may have gotten rid of the I number. Think they, I think they, WrestleMania is the only one still numbered. Okay. So, Brock Lesnar got tested again for drugs. That's twice. So, since we last left off, we announced that Brock Lesnar, they let him fight despite not being tested for drugs. Right. As it turns out, the Nevada Gaming Commission said, <laughs> cute, test him. Yeah. And what happened, Jay? Uh, he failed. Or, well, he he tested positive, which yes. is a failure. Yes. He did have drugs in his system. So, they tested him again. And, and he failed again. Failed again. Over two. So, Mark Hunt is... His opponent is now saying, I want more money. You guys essentially screwed me. Right. Against going out at him. That's not the big thing. Last week, we talked about how we could see UFC going towards the WWE. Without the gaming commission and all that. Right. Yeah. So, WWE is considered sports entertainment. Right. So, for instance, Brock Lesnar came out and he got tested positive for drugs. SummerSlam is in New York. So, it's the New York Gaming Commission. Okay. Who has a different set of guidelines for sports and sports entertainment. Okay. The guideline for sports entertainment, it's a that is the company's policy to make. Okay. So the gaming commission has nothing to say. Sure. Now WWE has an anti doping policy. <laughs> In fact, their champion was suspended for a month for having uh steroids. Okay. Roman Reigns. Sure. But they're not going to suspend Brock Lesnar. Well, of course not. He makes them way too much money. Way too much money. So really, the reason I'm bringing this up is, is that more reason for UFC to say, well, we're going to become sports entertainment. We can make more money, and we are no longer beholden to anybody's commission rules. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, we talked about this last week. Over the last few years, especially, the UFC has definitely turned into more of a uh, entertainment business anyways. I mean, sure, people are actually in the ring fighting. Sure. Uh, people are getting hurt. People are bleeding, whatever. But, I mean, they're setting up these rivalry storylines and really hyping that sort of thing. Uh, you know, one of the reasons they love Conor McGregor so much is because he is able to go in there and trash talk right. and just really get the, the hype of the crowd up around the fights. And people say who you see on screen and who he is behind are two very different people. Right. So, I mean, I feel like they're already going much more of the entertainment route anyways. Um, I think the only thing you have to worry about is how many of their big fighters would be opposed to the doping. Would they lose some of their big names if those people refuse to get in the ring with somebody who they know is doping? So that's Mark Does it matter? I mean, do do they then attract other people that can... Brock Lesnar's last opponent, Mark Hunt, same thing happened to him recently. Someone else he was supposed to fight got doping. So he's saying that he may not fight again because he's sick of it. Right. Which I get that. But at what point do you say, yeah, okay, you're sick of it, Mark Hunt. Nobody knows your name. That's fine. All these other people who are known are getting all these money, this much money, and they don't give a shit. Right. And in fact, we can just, given now that we are entertainment, we can make anyone a f- a celebrity that we want to. Yeah. It's all in this the story that you spin. Right. Um you know, and with the UFC just getting sold to a company who is all about marketing and imaging. Right. They got sold to a marketing company. I I would actually be more surprised if it didn't turn into sports entertainment at this point. I ten years, man. Five. Five. Wow. Slap that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to watch Predestination again. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Um, All right. So the other sports thing I have to talk about is a board game I recently got. Sure. It is called Baseball Highlights 2045. So it takes place in the year... Is, tw- is this after baseball is turned into sports entertainment? <laughs> so it takes place in the year 2045. Okay. There are natural humans who still play. But it's mostly robots. Cyborgs and robots. Okay. So... I know we don't really talk about a lot on board games on the show. I love board games. Okay. 
The reason I got this board game is it's one to four players. Sure. And I need something to play while Jess is watching Empire or something else I have no interest in. And I love baseball. Okay. The person who actually convinced me to buy this game did not know I loved baseball. They're just like, it's an amazing oh, one-player game. Interesting. And okay. then I'm like, I love baseball. They're like, that is neither here nor there. It's just a great fucking one-person <laughs> game. Okay. Um, so I have – the way it works is you're one team against another team. You start off with just your local team. And it's all cards, individual players. And they all do different things. They hit different hits. They do a doubles. This one cancels hits. This one catches the player's balls. You start off with rookies and veterans, and then you start drafting major league players. Okay. And then you draft better coaches. Okay. And it plays just like baseball does. You play a series. Whoever has the best of four in the series advances to the World Series. And then you do another four with the other better player. And like, that's it. It's so super simplistic. So how does this work with one player? Because I can totally see two players sure. or more doing that. So with one player, you have one team, and you set up a second team. And they don't have any rookies or veterans. They just have all-stars. Okay. And it's just it, every every game is six, six innings, essentially, is how it's played out. Okay. So you just turn over the next one of their cards. It may be super helpful to them. It may be not helpful to them at all. But... So it's luck of the draw for that opposing team you're playing against. Sure. But since they're playing all all stars, you can strategize and be like, all right, well, this cancels a hit against a robot. This catches, you know, cyborgs in the steel, so they lose bases. So you can strategize, but they just play work card that says home run. Oh. So you have a round to kind of strategize, whereas they don't, but they are still if you don't strategize, they are scoring a shit ton on you. Okay. And it really when I read the instructions and watched the instructional video, I'm like, man, that does not balance out well. There is no way that they're gonna that random card is gonna play better than I can strategizing. Oh, and it is very well balanced out. Okay, okay. I am constantly sacrificing hits to make sure they don't score. Interesting. Okay. So it, it's a lot of fun. You can put players on deck. You can have people on the pitching mound and change it out. Like it has all those baseball mechanics. However, if you call this game something else, not baseball related, and left all the mechanics in there, it, it would is, work just the same. It is still just a great strategy game. If this was okay. all military based, and you're like, no, these are your tanks, and these are your like lieutenants, and this is your would work out just as well. Okay, this is a cool, great game, uh, relatively inexpensive. It comes with the four base teams, and then sixty all stars. So let me ask you this: Yeah, are you familiar with Periscope? I'm not. So Periscope is an app. It's a, a live streaming app. Okay. Would you be willing to Periscope a game of baseball at some point? Would you? So we would play the game. So it's like Twitch? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. But you just use like your phone camera or your tablet camera. Yeah, totally. Okay. Look, look for that in the next maybe week, week We and can a half. absolutely do that. We can absolutely do that. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I know that you're definitely a big board game guy. I'm a big board game guy. I want to get more into board games. And I think that's a way that we could, uh, you know, maybe do that and, and have some of our viewers maybe hop onto our, our Periscope feed and check We can absolutely out. do that. We have, uh, like I said, we have this game coming out. There's DC Deck. Like, there's our many, many games you can get do this with. So, cool. for sure. Cool. Uh, Stay tuned for that. With that said, comic book news. <sighs> Why, ha? Huh? Because every time we go into comic book news, it's bad news. No, I'm only going to say one quick thing before we talk about our polls. Okay, before you get into this, let me tell you a funny story. Uh-oh. So you're the one who's going to say bad things. Got no, it. No, 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 no. This is actually... So I, I got a buddy who I've known for 18, 19 years. I don't know. A okay. while. Who uh, He sent me a message yesterday, the day before, and said that he's he's been listening to the show. Oh, okay. Uh, which I'm like, all right, cool. Um, and he's like, he sends me a link to an article, and it's all about all these changes that we were talking about last, I think last week, about all the different Marvel changes and stuff like that. And he's like, is is this why you hate Marvel? I'm like, one of many reasons. One of the, yeah. yeah. Um, so he's like, I, I don't understand how they can change. Like, he was just asking me all these questions. Right. All the stuff that you and I have been, like, talking about. Um, and I'm like, every time we bring up news, it must be just me, like, 
fuck this, fuck that. <laughs> this is bullshit. Uh, so that's why I'm hesitant. It, every, now, now I've gotten outside feedback on everything you talk about Marvel. and Every time we bad. bring up news, I agree. We're just like, man, fuck that. But then when we go over our comic reviews, I'm like, oh, this was really good. And I was, oh, no, and that's the thing. Like, the books that I'm reading that I'm liking, oh, yeah, they're I'm great. really liking. Yes. But all the news that we tend to bring up is, hey, I want to see your terrible reaction to this. Well, this is this is happy news. Okay, let's do it. Marvel has announced more. Su- no, 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 not yet. Sorry, no, don't. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're preemptively sorry. getting. This. It's just habit. Marvel has not released all the October solicitations. Okay, they've released just a handful. Okay, so what they haven't released is the seven other Squirrel Girl books. No, those are the upcoming titles. Those aren't actually solicited. Oh, okay, yet. okay. They started releasing solicitations. Okay. Death of X is officially solicited. Sure. But when Marvel, when remember we went over that list last week, yep. no X-Men book was on that right. list in that we were all really worried. Yeah. They have solicited for October, all the X-Men books are still going on. Okay. So while we're going to get the new Squirrel Girl, we're going to get the new this, we're going to do that, all the X-Men books are still carrying on their original numbering. And it's the only thing I'm reading for Marvel anyway, so I'm okay with See, that. See, I told you, I've come with good news, man. Good news. Who dies though? Who's who's which X dies? Cyclops. Oh, that's right. We need that. Yeah. Oh yeah, because we finally figure out what how he did he with the Inhumans yeah. that caused the death. I, I saw a picture online yesterday of uh, a guy getting it. He got a X Men tattoo. Big X Men fan. Okay. It's just Cyclops, and underneath it says Cyclops is right. Yes, of course. Of course, Cyclops is. Give that five years. It's going to have zero meaning at all. Well, Cyclops was right is like four or five years ago already. Right. But I'm saying by five years from oh, now, yeah. oh, all sure. of that's going to be gone. Yep. He's going to be back leading the team. He's going to be I alive. So. Professor I X will be so. there. Jean Grey will be there. Mm. And he's going to have to explain what the hell that tattoo means. So it went from Magneto is right to Cyclops is right. Yeah. That's yes. Oh, I love I love Cyclops is right. I have a T-shirt that says <laughs> it. It's one of my wallpapers I put on oh. every now and then. In fact, I have the AVX, AVX variant cover with Cyclops' hands in handcuffs, all bloody, uh-huh. making the X signal that says Cyclops was right. Yeah. You know why? Because apparently Cyclops was right. Cyclops was right. All right. So, this week, not in my poll, but what I read is Green Lanterns, number three, uh-huh. Batman, number three, Green Arrow, number three, Aquaman, number three. In my purchase poll is... Lucifer, number eight. Batgirl, Birds of Prey, Rebirth. The Hellblazer, Rebirth. Oh, all right. Justice League, number one. Superman, number three. All New Wolverine, number ten. Betty and Veronica, number one. Black Hammer, number one. Hunt, number one. And... Elseworlds Justice League Trade Paperback Volume 1, which is a reprinting of all the old Elseworlds stuff. Interesting. I have okay. the Batman one number one and Justice League number one, and they're going to start doing two okay. coming out shortly. Um, so my wife and I spent the day Saturday up in Bellingham. Okay. Hung out at Woods Coffee because... Delicious. And awesome. So literally our entire trip was... We, we got up there. We went to Boomer's Drive-In, Okay. Uh, which I don't know if you've been. I have not been by okay. what it is. So, yeah, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's a classic 50 style drive in. You actually pull up, they come out to your car, take your order. Uh, if you're eating there, they come and they hang the tray on your window. Uh, very happy days style. Uh, really good. So, we did that. And then we drove over to Woods Coffee, which, if you're ever in uh, uh, Whatcom County or North Skagit County, mm-hmm. um, or they have one in BC now. Really? They yeah. crossed the border. Yeah, it's wow. at some golf course, but. Um, Great coffee. Uh, so we did Boomers, then we did Woods, and then we did. Um, what did we? Oh, we went to Casa Que Pasa from there, and I got a potato burrito, which is fucking delicious. Amazing. Delicious. And then we went to Ishko, which is a little Irish pub, and then we that was that was it. So we went up there, and all we did was hit our old food haunts from when we lived up there. Which is funny because that's about an hour and a half north of here. Uh, it's an hour, hour and a half. Depending. I, I get there in about fifty-five minutes from where I live. Okay. So from here. From here. Yeah, hour 15 to hour and a half. My wife and I went about an hour and a half, two hours south of here to go to Olympia on Saturday. Wow. What? Did you go to that shop? Yes. The one that you said next time you go, you'll let me know? It was a very impromptu. I received a message from Frugal Brutal 
saying, hey, can you get your hands on this trade paperback? And I was like, yeah, right. Well, I mean, no, no, there's a reason I'm bringing it up. Okay. There's a reason I'm sure. bringing it no, up Go now. ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going back later this week. Okay. You want to go? Yeah. All right, cool. Cool. See? Uh, so I spent a couple hours in Woods Coffee. My wife is in grad school now, so she was doing her assignment. So I was like, I'm just going to take this time to catch up on a bunch of series that I'm behind on, that I have the books for, I just haven't read. So I caught up on uh, and finished. All of these are, are now ended. Uh, Savior. Secret Identity, Southern Cross, and there's one other one, and I don't remember what it is, and I closed out my comicsology. That's not going to work, is it? And one other one. Anyway, so I, I finished the, all those series. Okay. They're done. Um, they all wrapped out fairly well. The Southern Cross was weird. It ended up being this whole spiritual, we're going to sacrifice ourselves through a black hole to protect the rest of humanity thing. All that sounds right to me. Yeah. So I read those. And then uh, for today, things that came out, I read uh, Green Lantern 3. Green Lanterns. Yes. 3. I read it. Oh, good. Let's talk when you get through your list. Green Arrow 3. Okay. Batman 3. Okay. Uh, Batgirl, Birds of Prey 1, and Betty and Veronica 1. Okay, dope. Dope, dope, dope. We got some things to talk about. Yeah, uh, I have not read B&V 1 yet. Okay. I did read Batgirl, Birds of Prey, which I liked more than I thought I was going to. I I I actually had really high hopes for the book, and it fell short of. Oh, what I thought. see, I was in the opposite. So you, I had you had super no hopes, low and hopes. it came in middling. Correct. Yeah. Whereas Green Lantern's number three. Fuck this book. I are you gonna purchase number four, Jay? Because I didn't even purchase three. I mean, t- technically, I didn't purchase number three. Okay, good. I will be purchasing number three because I read it. I haven't purchased it yet. I don't know. It's hard. Because the book's so terrible. The book's so terrible. But it is a Green Lantern's book. So I have had, I own every issue of Green Lantern, Green Lantern Core, Green Lantern New Guard, anything with the words Green and Lantern next to each other since issue 51 when Kyle Rayner got the ring. Okay? Okay, so your yours goes a little farther than mine. I cannot in good conscience buy Green Lanterns, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because all those other stories, I could at least stomach. This is so bad, I can't stomach, and DC does not deserve the money. Okay. They, how else are they going to know that this is bad? So I, I have every Green Lantern issue from um, whatever the series pre-52 was. Sure. So The uh, Jeff Johns. Yeah. The Seminole Josh Johns. Um, so Green Lantern, Green Lantern Corps, Sinestro, Red Lantern. I even fucking bought all the Larflees. Yeah, me too. Um. This is just so bad, though. And it's so inconsistent. It is so, horribly so inconsistent. In this issue, you've got uh, the Guardian that shows up. The steampunk Guardian. Yeah, who, I don't know who the fuck that is. Uh, but he's like, I, I'm at this house because it belongs to a Green Lantern. I really hope it's Hal Jordan. Or it might be that new new guy. What is his name? John Stewart? Yes. Fucking John Stewart's been a Green Lantern for 20-some-odd years. And that was the point. That this guy's so out of touch. And I'm gonna t- but but here's the thing is is it that he's so out of touch or are they trying to truncate all of this and say John Stewart has only been a, a Green Lantern I, for I'm gonna a couple break months. something down for you and I think it's gonna break your heart he's that out of touch and I'm gonna tell you why do you know what the new ring is gonna be called no the Phantom Ring fuck you do you know what the hypothesis again hypothesis is of the phantom ring what's that phantom zone no so the belief again hypothesis is that that guardian has been in the phantom zone and that's where he went to hide this ring do we have more drink over there i might you can maybe suck some out of the ice i don't don't know again that's the hypothesis that's what's being we know it's called the Phantom Ring. That's all we know. But it I, makes sense if that guy has been hiding it in the Phantom I, Zone. I really just want it to be the ring from the movie The Phantom from 1994 with oh, Alec Baldwin. With the sc- no, that's the shadow. You're thinking that Billy Zane was the Billy Zane. You're right. You're yes. right. You're right. That'd with, be hilarious. That would be great with that. But that's not what's going to happen. No, it's not. Um, yeah, I might just give up on this book, which I feel terrible about because Green Lantern is – that's my book. Love but it. Love it. We both have. We even have Green Lantern Inc. Yeah, the but th- this is not. So 
And we've said it from the get-go. I love Sam Humphreys. As a guy, he's so nice. But that dude can't write a fucking comic to save his life. No. And if you're listening, Sam, I'm sorry. But Green Lantern... I, I hold out hope that maybe after the first arc, he goes away. That is also what I'm hoping for. It's not going to happen. In my mind, he leaves come issue seven. I go back and buy the four I'm missing because it got <laughs> real good all of a sudden. <laughs> um, so in this... It just makes no sense. Simon Baz has been the only Green Lantern to ever have the ability to bring people back from life. And now he's curing the Red, Red Lantern. Lantern. Yeah. And just turning them to so, normal. So here's here's what I love about this. So you have a problem with him getting all of these extra powers you've never seen before, right? Yes. What has always been my problem with Kyle Rayner? That he got extra things? Yeah. Yeah. So you are now experiencing my Kyle Rayner frustration. But at least Kyle made sense. He at least No, he didn't. Here's why Kyle made sense to me. Because his ring encompassed every single other ring in one. Baz just has a normal ring. As far as we know, uh, they're gonna make it be a different ring. Son of a bitch. I mean just Make all the Green Lanterns equal. Like, make make some of them have stronger of the established abilities. I don't need uh, Lantern Vision Sight, whatever. Emerald Sight. I don't. I don't need bringing people back from the dead. I don't need curing rage. I don't need. I don't need Ion. I don't need White Lantern. No. I don't need any of that shit. I I, I cannot argue with you. I agree one hundred percent. So it, Green Lanterns broke my heart. The heart was bad. The story sucked. There was no redeeming factor in this book. No. And now we've got Jessica Cruz infected with rage. Right. The only good thing about this book is there was one panel that had Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> the rage kitten. Right. Um, with that said, I'll totally flip it. And Batman number three was better than I thought one and two were. Still not good enough that I need to buy it monthly, though. No. Because we found out the origin of Gotham. Well, we Gotham sort Girl. of, we sort of found out the origin. Well, we know who they are at least. We don't right. know where they got. We no. know that they got their powers somewhere in Europe or yeah. Asia. So somewhere not at Gotham. Right. How do you feel about that opening scene? So obviously, when I first started to read the opening scene, I thought they were retelling the Bruce Wayne. Right, which is what you're supposed to think. Right, and then it turns out it's Gotham. I. I am upset that it's everything down to the T of the pearl necklace. No, it was not a pearl necklace. It was a gold necklace. It was a gold chain. Okay, well, whatever it is. Because, I know this sounds nerdy. I saw that, and I was like, wait, it's not pearls. It's supposed to be pearls. And you flip the page, and then it wasn't Martha. But what, all the way down to the necklace. 100%. Exact like, same. Exact same. No, just... I have no problem that we have these new vigilante heroes running around. I do I don't need you to align the guy that much with Bruce Wayne. Have him be something different. Right. I am totally fine with it being that his family was in trouble and Batman saved them. And he became obsessed with being a vigilante himself. Don't, don't make it the exact story. And it was so convenient. Oh, but his sister just wasn't there that night. Right. Yeah. But, you know, kids, they do everything the same. Um. How do you... So initially, I struggled with the timeline of it all. Okay. Because when Batman... Because because if they were really like eight-year-old kids and now they're grown-ups, Batman should be Batman beyond Batman? Well, or close to it? Or close to. But that's yeah. always been the Batman thing, right? Like, Batman hasn't aged even though Dick Grayson has. But how much is Dick Grayson aged at this point? So... That's my thing, right? There's always that. Does that this put gray. Does this put Gotham and Dick Grayson as the same age? Because Gotham was eight years old when this happened. How old was Dick Grayson in current storyline when? Doesn't say current storyline. Okay, because I know during New Fifty Two or whatever it was supposed to be like sixteen. Yeah, late twenty one. Yeah, something like that. no, no, it was like thirteen to sixteen. Or s something. But still, yeah. Oh, I, sorry, I meant from the time that his parents died to the time he was Nightwing. Okay. It wasn't supposed to be, like, so. six, something like that. But, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Like, obviously, the, uh, I don't remember his real name, but Gotham uh, was prepubescent when his parents were attacked. And right. now he's very much not. 
so when I first saw Gotham, I did not see a 20 year old. I saw him to be in his thirties. Sure. But now that they say that he's now in his twenties, if you do the math, it's got to be in his twenties, right? Yeah. Because think about it, New Fifty Two, but Batman at being five years is Batman. Right. It's been about four years since then, four or five years, which puts him at about ten years as Batman, which means he would have to save Gotham's family on his first venture out as Batman. Right. But I'm pretty sure in that image we saw, he was wearing his current costume. Oh, absolutely. Which. Sure, I can I can excuse that. I'm gonna excuse that. Absolutely, it's one of those small things, like how Simon Baz in issue three of Green Lanterns was talking about his gun. The whole when he was talking about his gun to Jessica, it's it's a it's a construct. Oh yeah, that was driving me crazy. I'm like, no, that's not that's not what we're talking about. Yeah, here. Dr- drove you, me crazy. You carry an actual fucking pistol, not hard light pistol. Yes. Anyway, so I can excuse like that Batman costume. It just puts the age again in right. question as always. So, yeah. Um, with that said, do we want to talk really fast a little bit more about Superman? Did you get a chance to read it? No, I don't read Superman. Uh, so I'm just going to touch on something because Superman just doesn't want you to be happy. Okay. Like, we're at issue three, and we've already had two animal, animal deaths. We lost Goldie, Lois's cat, and now we lost Crypto. Wait, what? Boom. No. Yeah. What? Oh. Yeah. Oh, like, that's sad. Isn't it sad the Eradicator was going to eradicate John's human side? Crypto stopped it. But now we get a real, real angry. I mean, I'd be pissed. Right? So Superman doesn't want you to be happy. He's, apparently, Peter J. Tomasi doesn't want to have pets. He just doesn't like them. No. Or whatever. No. With that said, loving the Superman stuff. Okay. Loving it. Cool. Um, I'm curious when you get around to reading Betty and Veronica, what you think. Yeah. Because, I mean, we've talked about this several times. You and I are very much into the Archie book. Love Archie book. We tried Jughead. Horrible book. This is somewhere in the middle. Oh, really? But I don't know how... I can't... Where I, in the middle? It's it's definitely not dead center, but I can't tell which, which side I'm leaning on. Uh, the Adam Hughes cover is great. Yes. The interior art, not so much. So that's kind of Adam Hughes, right? His covers are always amazing, but he takes a long time to do his work. So his interiors are, are always kind of suffer at it. Yeah. Which is fine. I, right. Weird. So there's a gag in there, which you'll get to, where okay. uh, the dog who's narrating eight pages like 11 and 12 or something like that. So they just got Betty and Veronica to lay down and recap Read. what happened on those. And of course they're in swimsuits. Of course, why wouldn't they? That's, be? that's actually one of the lines. Like, of course we got them to be in swimsuits. And I'm like, that's you're trying too hard at that point. That actually reminds me of something that okay. I, I was about to say goodbye to everybody, but no. Now you can listen to me rant about one more thing, and it's not that Jay and I both shaved our heads. I mean, I've been doing it for a while. That's you're the one who told me to do it. Yeah. No. I... So last week Jay leaves and he's like, "You just shave your head." Am I? Because no, you. What did you call it? No guard. Yeah. My wife says, what's no guard? I take my clippers out. My coats and the clippers like this. And then he's went right down the middle yep. of my hair. And you sent me a picture right of that. Right like, down the middle. I'm like, there's no there's no going back on that. No. Anyways, the thing I want to talk to you about is Frank Cho. Okay. Everyone knows Frank Cho. Yeah. Frank Cho is one of the most iconic artists in the industry. However, Frank Cho is very known for sexualizing his covers. Yes. They're very risque. Absolutely. Over-sexualized covers. Now... His interiors are not that way. No. But his covers are. Well, so if you, you got to get him to pick the book up off the shelf. Well, he only does variant covers. That's true. I forgot about that. With that said, if you buy a Frank Cho variant cover, you know that's what you're going to get. Yes. Frank Cho has left Wonder Woman yeah, as, the cover, as the variant cover artist. And what was his reason? Greg Rucka. Absolutely. Because Greg Rucka is very much pushing an agenda with the Wonder Woman book, and he was super pissed off about the covers. Now, do I understand that maybe they were over-sexualized? Absolutely. They were Frank Cho fucking covers. But here's the thing. They weren't the main covers. They were the variant covers. Right. And you don't, you know what a Frank Cho variant cover looks like. For anybody who reads comic books that knows what a variant cover is, you know if it's a Frank Cho, it's a sexualized cover. Yep. Don't get me wrong. She's fully clothed, but it's like she's 
a little curvier, a little different proportions. She, her, her body shifted, but he still used the same costume that was inside. Here's what's driving me crazy. Greg Ruck has decided to rewrite Wonder Woman's history again to get rid of everything as Rello did because he didn't like it. Uh huh. We know Greg Ruck doesn't stay on. I mean, every no, time he'll, he he'll comes get... back to Marvel and DC, he gets pissed off and he leaves. He swears he'll never come back again, then he comes back again. Because he likes a paycheck. So he's essentially going to ruin what Azarello did, which was amazing, with something new because he didn't like it, and then just piss off and leave and cry about it. The part that gets me is that he's complaining about Frank Cho's covers being overly sexual. However, in his issue two of Wonder Woman, so every other issue of Wonder Woman is one's going to be in current time, the next issue's her origin story. Okay. The next one's the current time. So the odds are current time, the even are year one. Sure. We find out that in Themyscira, they're all lesbians because there's <laughs> no men. So they have lesbian lovers. So we learn that she has lesbian lovers and you actually see one of them. They don't have sex, but it's very clear. Right. And that's what it's alluded to. But you can't have a but good looking Wonder Woman on the cover. That's what I'm fucking saying. Huh? Really? Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you. And guess what? Your book sucks anyways. But uh, have a nice week, everybody. See you. Bye.